Hello and welcome to the Dipmikes YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about a vintage pair of speakers. It's the Tanberg TL 5110s. Now my interest in these, and you have to excuse my voice, I am just getting over coronavirus. After two years that's finally caught up with me. Anyway, my interest in these is the bass drivers. Now they are exactly the same almost as these, which is Celestian T2600 bass drivers, which you'd find in Ditton 66s, Ditton 25s, Ditton 44s, and so on and so on. And in these, now there is a slight difference. If you look, Celestian doped the cone to smooth out the frequency response. And for some reason, the ones supplied to Tanberg are just a paper cone, so they're not doped. They have a slightly different part number, but essentially it's the same cone, it's the same surround, the same chassis, the same magnet, and probably even the same coil. And um, I bought these because they were quite interesting to me. However, when I got them, I did notice a slight problem, which I'll show you in a minute, which just goes to show that realistically, sometimes all of us need to be a little bit vigilant when we're actually looking to buy a pair of used or vintage loudspeakers. Let's have a closer look. 12 inch outwardly rolled rubber surround. This is that Celestian unit. Now it's not uncommon for Celestian to provide drive units for other manufacturers. Things like the Celestian HF 1300 have been in a number of loudspeakers over the years. The Celestian HF 2000 also, that's been in a number of speakers. The MD or MF 500 mid-range driver has been in various other speakers over the years other than Celestian's own speakers. So it's not uncommon for a manufacturer to buy in uh, other people's drive units and compile their own system. So this was a Celestian base driver, a peerless mid-range unit, and what should have been Tanberg or probably a Heiko tweeter. If you look at that one, that's got the right tweeter in it. That one's a mission tweeter from a much, much newer speaker. And unfortunately, I didn't study the photos clearly enough. And... That one's got the proper unit, that one hasn't. So what's the chances of being able to find a replacement tweeter for these? Because according to the internet, that is Tanberg's own tweeter, but it isn't. It's just badged up as that. After a bit of research, I managed to find a replacement tweeter. Actually, I found a pair, so I can switch both of them out. I'll just show you that drive unit now. That's a legitimate replacement HF unit for this. And as I've got two, I can test these and then I'll probably replace both of them. Now, this brings me up to my next thing. What do these sound like? Well, with the wrong tweeter in it straight away, there's gonna be an issue. However, I have tested them. And this is, this is just a little bit of advice to somebody who may be buying and used loudspeakers. I've plugged them into a very basic little Sony unit. I could plug them into some proper speaker tests and equipment, but for you guys, I'm just gonna show you that I bought for about 10 quid off Facebook Marketplace, a little Sony micro system. It's got circuit protection, so if it's short circuit, if there's a problem with it, it will just switch itself off. But it's an inexpensive piece of equipment to test the speaker with if you haven't got the proper equipment to test loudspeakers. So let's just see if they work. <laughs> So they do work. It's not blown the little Sony unit. There's actually music coming out of them. And actually I have checked all the drive units work, even this foreign mission one. So what I'm gonna do, because they don't sound particularly good in all honesty, is I'm going to strip these down, have a look inside, check the condition of the crossovers. And I'm gonna do a crossover video with my friend, Matt Casey. Some of you may already follow his YouTube channel and he does a lot of work on refurbishing speakers of this era, particularly Ditton 44s and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do, I thought it'd be quite good fun to do a crossover video in both senses of the word. I'm gonna send these crossovers to Matt and we're gonna cross over our YouTube channels. Once I get the crossovers back from Matt, I will replace both of these tweeters and we'll have a proper listen to see how they sound. So just a little bit more on why I'm using this cheap piece of equipment here. Basically, you wouldn't want to plug an unknown pair of speakers to you into your main system. 
If there's a short circuit, that could be a problem. It could damage your amplifier, it could damage your equipment. So something I sometimes do, particularly if I'm going to pick up a pair of speakers, is I take this with me and I test the loudspeakers just using the FM, but with no aerial plugged in. So what you're getting is just static and it's much easier to detect whether the speakers are working than it is if you use music. The trouble is sometimes people will play you a piece of music, play it incredibly loud, and you're in somebody else's house, you're probably wanting to get home as quickly as possible, and you're not gonna to listen to them properly. So with this, you can literally just turn it up onto that static, run your ear over each drive unit, and check that they're working. That's a good start. That'll give you an indication that everything's working. <laughs> This was a slightly different situation for me because they were dropped off with the grill covers on and I didn't even look at them until I got home. When I got them home, this is when I realised we had this foreign tweeter in here. Anyway, that's that basic little Sony unit. What I'm going to do now is take out these drive units and have a look at the crossover before I send it off to Matt. Drive units removed, first thing. I hate that, that's a terrible bodge. I mean, it would have been so easy to just put clips on the original wires and clip onto the mission tweeter, which is actually working in good nick, so that'd probably be a good spare for something. This horrible wadding, like fiberglassy material, which is really itchy, I'll be putting some gloves on for that. This is the mid-range unit. It does say Tamburg, Alnico Magnet. It looks totally like peerless to me. I've seen many peerless drivers like that. And the Celestian, so that's a T1884, which is a totally different part number to what you would find in Celestian 44s or 66s. But as you can see, that's a non-doped 12-inch base unit. So I'll get some gloves on and we'll take this uh, wadding out and we'll get the crossover over to Matt. Okay, so I've got the crossover out. <laughs> that wasn't very easy because somebody had already been in here and cross-threaded the screws. Now these crossovers, the actual input is screwed right through the crossover into the terminals on the back. And being an old speaker, these are the screw type which I will do away with. So once Matt has had a go at these crossovers which have quite a lot of loose components, so uh, they could do with some work, um, I will fit banana um, sockets on there. It'll be easy as anything to do. They'll go straight through the crossover, bolt them down, and then it'll be much easier to plug the speakers in. I will probably do away with this um, uh, wadding inside because it is horrible. Um, I can take some foam. I could try foam. I could experiment with that, or I could try the usual wadding. I've got loads of, of either or either type, but um, this always makes me laugh. You've got air core inductors, but they've put um, a bolt right through the middle of them, sort of making them an iron core inductor. Um, but yeah, all these loose components and we've got pretty ancient looking caps. So 75, 50, uh, 20 and 10. So um, not the most common values ever, but yeah, reasonably, reasonably well done crossover. So I will strip the other one down Get that off to Matt, and then I'll conclude the Tanberg video. Take care, guys. I'll speak to you soon.